Hello everyone, my name is Paul. I work for a company called Micrographics and I work in Cape Town, South Africa. In today's video, I'd like to have a look at twin motion and specifically doors within Revit. Over here we are looking at a small little Revit model that we are busy developing and on the ground floor we've got some doors and we would like to go and have a look at that within twin motion. So of course your Revit license now comes with a twin motions license. If you open that in twin motion, then it takes a little while to open. We'll keep the hierarchy as it is and just open that file. <coughs> and there we can see that we've got our model open in twin motion. You can navigate and initially you might think that everything is good and if you are in the fly mode or in a drone mode you can actually fly through doors and that's fine. WASD tools that we find there. Okay. Wherever you point your mouse, that's where you are going to fly towards. You can fly in and out, just like a WASD. But then you think, well, this isn't looking so great, so I actually want to walk. And there is a walk tool up here. And you can choose to go from a pedestrian mode or to a drone mode. There's the pedestrian mode. And that's actually better because now it implies physics comes into play. So your eyes are kept at a specific height. There's our door, and now we'd like to go through the door. But the physics precludes me from going through the door. It doesn't understand that I want to go through the door. And then over here we've got some furniture. So if I come in from the back of the furniture, and I try and move forward, it stops me. But just like it was somewhere with a gaming engine, if I come from the front of the furniture, it allows me to jump on top of the furniture and over the furniture and then down onto the other side. So there's definitely some physics that's built into here. But from an architectural perspective, that's kind of irritating because we'd like to go through the through the Revit door. All right. Now there are specialized workflows where in Revit you separate the families. You have a a door outside and a door inside or, or panel for the door and a frame for the door you basically have to have multiple families and you have to control them and copy them within here and apply <coughs> specific actions to that door to make that open each and every door within twin motion uh, when I learned that I was a bit disappointed because I would have liked to have this sort of navigation automatically open the doors but of course it doesn't do that but there is a shortcut, and that is if you select that door, you can see that it identifies it within the scene there. And if you right click on that, you can say select all instances. And if you right click again, then you can say replace objects. It's wanting something from the library, so that we're going to find in the library over here. If we look for the doors, so there's some doors. And enter, and these are doors that can be used within twin motion directly. So these are doors in twin motion. Here's an aluminium simple rotating door and one drags that onto the object over there to replace the existing doors with the aluminium doors. Start replacement. So immediately it switches out that door to a different door type. <coughs> At the bottom you'll see that there's a little icon and that little icon allows you to see the details of the door. So there's the opening style, 
Here's the details, the hinges, the widths, the thickness, the framing, the opening style. There's the behavior. And then we've got something that called the trigger radius. So that trigger radius will open the door depending on how far away you are from the door. So let's suppose it's 1.5 meters. You can see the circle over there. That will then open the door when you are 1.5 meters away from the door. So let's just see how this behaves now. I'm still within the walk mode. I walk closer to the door. I'm still within the fly mode, unfortunately. Okay. Some other reason it's gone wrong. <coughs> right, so we just increase the radius a little bit. So now when we walk forward, there we can see the door opens, and there's actually enough time for us to go through the door, and there that door opens as well and we can go back through the door again. So these doors over here, you can't just easily replace like that. They don't get recognized as doors. So that's going to be tricky. Just seeing there's the doors glass. It's um, again, replace the object. And let's see what we can get over the, again, let's just go with the door like that start the replacement so obviously that door doesn't look that great we would have to alter that door so that it looks something better but maybe in this case it would be better to do the long-winded thing and use the 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 long-winded rivet way to create a custom door that one can use within this wall here because it's not automatically going to show up like something that you like so that's something for you to watch out for in the workflow with Revit and twin motion. So I hope this has uh, alerted you to the fact that your doors might not behave exactly like you want when you are walking through your twin motion model but it's still a very nice tool for navigating your model and being able to see what you've designed. Albeit with a few physics things thrown in you can now jump over the furniture Till next time, enjoy Revit.